We are here and it is semi-final time for Euro 2024 and this tournament has had another couple of roller coaster turns throughout the quarterfinals. If you didn't see the video where we did the predictions for it, again, similar to the round of 16, I feel that pretty much all the calls were almost spot on. Uh, you know, I did say Turkey would go through because I, I just felt like there might have been something there, but the Dutch ultimately obviously were too good for them. But, you know, most of the results did kind of go the way you'd expect them to. Maybe there was a, a few more penalty shootouts than we expected or whatever. But we are now here at semi-final time. We can start to think about what the final will look like and who the eventual winners could be. In the video today, we'll be previewing just the semi-finals to see the two teams that will be shaping up for France and for Spain, as well as for England and the Netherlands. Apologies to everyone for the last video. Again, I was saying Holland and... Apparently that's offensive, so sorry. As well as doing the score predictions on UEFA.com and on the SofaScore website, you guys can play along with the predictions for this as well. Get into the comment section and let me know what your thoughts and feelings are coming into the semi-final. Who will emerge victorious and who will be in the final of Euro 2024? At any point in the video, if you do laugh, you learn, you like something or whatever, please do like and subscribe to the channel for more content like this as we pretty much finish up with the Euros, but we're getting stuck into all sorts of transfer window stuff that's happening all across European and really world football at this point. And uh, yeah, let's just get stuck straight into it. Now, right from the beginning, after we got out of the group stages, there was a strong half of the draw, and there was a weaker half of the draw that England and Holland, both, uh, Netherlands, I beg your pardon, both found themselves in, and, you know, we've basically ended up with that semi-final, which I think a lot of people drawing the tree out might have suspected, based on probabilities or whatever, that was one of the most likely outcomes we were going to see. But on the other side of the tree was Spain and France. Again, I think most people probably seen... Uh, France getting to the semi-final, but Spain versus Germany was a coin toss for a lot of people in. With France having to come up against Portugal, you know, the Ronaldo factor, they've got so many world-class players across their squad. It definitely wasn't a, a foregone conclusion, especially with the French team that we've seen. But Spain, for me, have easily been the best team that we've seen at the Euros. One thing that we see with Spanish football, especially over the last 20 years since this millennium, really, is that they generate squads. They generate teams of players that can all play together, all know the basic system that they're going to play, if and when called upon for international duty. And that's why we've seen such resounding success, not just the senior level for Spain, but all the way through the youth ranks as well. Time and time again, they're competing in semi-finals and finals of Euros and World Cups and everything else. And the same can be said for France, who have an incredible youth system as well eh, on the international level. So this is, make no mistake about it, an absolute powerhouse of a game. And this is a match that, on paper here, if we look at the expected 11s for both teams, could be one of the, you know, it could be a classic semi-final because... There's so much going on for both teams here that might play into the hands of the other one. The main standout for this, of course, is the Spanish defence, which has been decimated by suspension and, you know, whatever else, yellow card accumulation. So Robin Lenormand and Danny Carvajal will not be making this game. I think it will be Vivian and Navas that come in for the guys that are out. But there's also a tournament-ending injury for Pedri in midfield, who has been scintillating in this tournament. And it feels that like probably Danny Olmo is going to pick up this spot. So it's definitely not the... the the, the Spanish team from front to back that we've seen get through the group stages, get past Germany, etc. This is definitely a weakened Spanish team. But again, this is where the, the ethos and the, you know, the, the identity that the Spanish have, because they still have Rodri. They still have Fab Rue or Fabian Ruiz to me and you in the engine room controlling the controlling the game here. And for how the French will be set up, this is maybe, again, something that maybe does play into the Spanish hands because with uh, France having a midfield of Kante, Chumene and Camavinga, ultimate transition merchants, but they will give the space up to the likes of Rodri and Fabian Ruiz. And with the, the running and the decisive ability of Lamine Yamal and Nico Williams and the tap-in fox-in-the-box merchant that we've got uh, of Alvaro Morata, you almost you can't write off Spain getting a goal or two in this one. But with the weaknesses that they do have, this could be the game where France come to life because Mbappe is going to be running Navas ragged this whole game and he'll be trying to get as much change out of any weaknesses he can 
in this side of the defence, which really does play into his hands, as well as Teo Hernandez. Now, this is a bit of a duel that I'm quite interested in this game because Yamal should force Teo to be a bit more defensive and not bomb on his support as much because if the ball turns over, you know, you've got the likes of Rodri, you've got Olmo, you've got Ruiz in here to try and play Yamal on the bounce on the counter-attack and send him forth. But again, this is a matchup that Teo Hernandez is not known for his defensive prowess, let's say, can give away a foul or two, is good to get booked as well. And Yamal might be... Uh, thinking he's going to have him on toast. So this is going to be a really interesting duel. Up and down, France is left with him back against Navas. Vivian on this side as well. And uh, Teo Hernandez and Lamine Yamal here, who's getting all the plaudits in this tournament so far. Um, but like I said, this midfield is the transition monsters, uh, the transition powerhouse of the tournament for me, because Kamavinga, especially watch him in this game, it'll be if he can keep it going, which he expected, well, obviously being a Real Madrid player against a lot of these Spanish players. When Kamavinga gets on the ball, it doesn't matter if he's actually facing his own goal. It doesn't matter what his body shape is. He's so good at taking a turn, repositioning his body and be facing forward and be playing the ball forward at so many opportunities that he is going to be putting the Spanish, you know, midfield and defence kind of always on the back foot, always on their heels. With Griezmann still waiting to come to life in this tournament, Colo Muani with another copy and paste kind of 1v1 miss in the last round that was reminiscent of the World Cup. And Mbappe over here, as I say, with all this kind of joy to perhaps get. I do think that, because Cam, you know, the, the thing to underline with this is that Camavinga, Chumeni, Kante, these guys go everywhere in the pitch. And this is going to cause Spain so many problems where they're not going to get quite into full tiki-taka flow for my money. Because Griezmann is here, but he might pop up down here in left mid for five minutes and just keep the, the you know, if everything's over this side and Spain are trying to build out, or equally on the right-hand side, if they are going to go try and go through Kukurea and try and work down this side a little bit more, he can easily drop into these little pockets here and make things a bit of a nuisance. And because of that, the likes of Camavinga, the likes of N'Golo Kante, they find themselves in very dangerous situations where... And what I mean by dangerous is it's like the, the ball's a magnet for both of these teams and they're going to have more and more players congested around the ball when possession is quite tight. And with these guys being able to pick up the ball and then quickly get the ball forward, you know, it doesn't need to be a, a defence split pass Tony Cruz style or whatever, but it could just be a simple, you know, playing it into the man who is five yards further forward, who has a better view of the pitch and can play in someone a little bit better. That, you know, it's really the antithesis of what Spain want to come up against here. They want a team that's going to stand off them, which they've kind of had for the majority of this tournament. With the exception of Germany, of course, that game was quite fiery for the most part. But the engine that France have is, as I say, the antithesis to what Spain probably um, could come up against. But with uh, Koundé, Upamecano, Saliba, I really do feel that, again, like, like the French defence, it's hard to see that this Spanish attack really does get through them when you can analyse the whole midfield and with the defence here because individually 1v1 recovery runs, positional awareness, how hard they are on the tackle, decision making, there's so much to like about the French kind of spine, the backbone that they've got here but they have missed that kind of killer touch, that kind of killer instinct that the Spanish with Fabian Ruiz, Dani Olmo um, in the last couple of games have really shown and that is what unlocks your forward players which is kind of what the, the French's main problem has been so far in this tournament. So it's going to be a really tough one to call. I do think France are going to get a goal or two down this left-hand side, uh, Spain's right, almost unavoidable. Something does tell me about that this game is going to go to extra time. So if I do think that the French are going to score two, but I do find that, you know, thinking right now that Spain are going to cut France open a couple of times is hard to imagine. But when you see the goals that they score, I said this in my predictions for the last couple of rounds, Spain had such an established route to goal that they could do it almost blindfolded. If you look at Danny Olmo's goal from edge of the box, for example, like so... It's not that they really need to cut France open and uh, death by a thousand paper cuts with a million passes from left to right. They can just pop up in the right place at the right time and they don't need to burst the net. They can just pass it into the corner, you know. So, yeah, I'm going to go with Spain to France too. I think this is going to go to extra time and I hope because we're going to have a two-each draw, it's going to be somewhat a bit of a classic. But that means we're going to go to extra time. That means we're going to go maybe even to penalties or whatever, that maybe the French bench could be the difference in extra time. Maybe it doesn't quite get all the way to penalties. If it does go to penalties, by the way, what a battle of the goalkeepers were set up for. But I think I, like, I've backed Spain for a good bit and I think Spain will get their way into the final on this one. It feels like all eyes of the world are also going to be on the Netherlands versus England in a semi-final that both teams will really be treating like a final because neither one of them have really, really turned up in this one. We've all heard about England's trials and tribulations and tactical inadequ inadequacies and, you know, shortcomings and everything else in between. But for Holland watching them, it really does feel like they're really struggling to 
get out of second or third gear. They've definitely got individuals that are kind of turning up in moments and doing little bits and bobs, but it feels like stereotypically quite Dutch, you know, there's not that fluid kind of vein of form across two or three matches necessarily. I know it's a short tournament, but, you know, there's not, you know, it just feels a little bit disconnected, a little bit discombobulated. And there's been a wee bit of rotation between midfield and defence and attack across some of the fixtures. We see the bench used very heavily. And to be quite honest with you, to try and predict what England were going to do, I used the SOFA score predicted lineup to do the board because God knows what uh, Southgate is really going to pick at this point. It's a bit of a uh, anyone's guess at this stage. But England have undoubtedly got the raw quality in positions to, you know, they really should be winning this on paper. But Holland, although they've been like discon disconnected, discombobulated, they've not been like, like Spain or Germany where they've really like went into a, a good kind of vein of form. Like I say, they do have moments, they do have match winners in them and they are just missing. Like Holland could have a really good game in this one and the whole tournament gets rewritten almost because they've been kind of solid enough without being impressive. And if they get a really impressive semi-final result, then it kind of does change the outlook. Shooting here, who's basically an advanced kind of uh, defender, you know, the kind of shield across the back four here, does a good job of, you know, protecting the back line here. And this has been an area where England, uh, against most other teams, don't just have like a back four and one guy to deal with. But like, I've seen England crossing the ball to Kane and he's got five guys around him. This might be the perfect opponent for England in the semi-final because Holland do have that air of expectation. They do have that talent. You know, they do have that philosophy, that style of play, total football and everything else. So they're not going to be camping in and doing a deep block and then looking to spring on England. They are wanting to have spells in the match. They'll go, you know, passing sequence for passing sequence, duel for duel. We'll try and attack you. You'll try and attack us, whatever. It's football. We'll deal with it. And that might just play into the likes of Foden, Bellingham. Obviously, Saka has kind of grown as uh, the tournament's going on. It might just really play into their hands because the likes of Kobe Mainu and Declan Wright, like this whole team is star-studded. You know, there really isn't a weak link in it. Now, I know the defence is where the weak link maybe is with uh, Guy, Shaw, Stones and Walker being the, being the first kind of change of defence that we've really seen throughout the tournament. And Shaw being rushed back from... Uh, from injury or whatever it might be if he is into this game and Donny Malin might be fancying himself um, you know and this is like quite a PSV centred attack Gakpo, Depay, Malin I don't know Javi Simons was only there on loan or whatever but that's kind of, kind of fun vibe for the Dutch if there's any PSV fans but every one of these guys will be fancying you know maybe not Walker versus Gakpo but Gakpo knows Walker you know he's played against him so I don't think he'll be fearful of him or Stones necessarily and Gakpo can shoot from the edge of the box he's good for tap-ins so is Memphis Depay of course and again like all of these players are very similar in a fantastic way that they are capable of really scoring from anywhere in the final 20 yards they are very good team players they will play each other in and in Javi Simons they do have that bit of real stardust that's a level above the rest to really help unlock them so like, there's a lot going for both teams here I think this will be a very open encounter I would be very surprised if it did make it all the way to extra time because I just do think that there will be enough goals going and between the likes of Pickford and Verbruggen although they both have their moments and they've had re relatively good tournaments you must say uh, for the most part um, again, I don't see any of these guys really keeping a clean sheet in this one. I'd be less surprised if Spain or France, one of those teams, got a clean sheet because, again, defence and the goalkeeper, a uh, kind of whole unit there is, is far superior, I think. And, you know, Kane's going to score. You've got to think that's a bit of a given. But I do think that, yeah, this is going to be a real back and forth, a real encounter for the neutral. So then it really does come down to how many goals will there be. And, you know, I can't get away from the fact of, I think if it is going to be halfway the sort of match that I think it's going to be, I don't know how Holland can outscore England that if it's that sort of match. Although I do think the Dutch defence, man for man, you know, we're looking at Van Dijk, Ake, De Vries, De Vries, you know, high profile defence, certainly, that 1v1 should do well enough, but... The talent England have got in all the right areas. Yeah, I just it's hard to imagine Holland outscoring England. So I think I'm gonna I'm gonna put this down as being a real left field scoreline. I'm gonna go and wow, these semi-finals will be really high scoring if I'm anything to go by. But I'm gonna go for England to get three in this one, and I'm gonna go for Holland to get two. Maybe I want to, maybe two one. Actually, maybe I want to change that. Two one, yeah. Let's tone down the yeah. Let's go for two one. But I do think like this game, like it is knife edge stuff. You know, if England do miss a chance or two, maybe Holland can get a goal against the run of play. Maybe take the wind out the sails. It still could go anyway. And Holland getting to a final should not be written off. But I just really do think that it's hard to imagine the English uh, talent that they've got not go in a, in a proper football match against Holland and uh, not coming out ultimately victorious. 
But I think if it does go to extra time, then it's really coin toss situation or... You know, but it should be a really exciting semi final, guys. I'm looking forward to catching the comment section of this one, and I'm preparing for what is probably going to be a Spain England final on screen. And now, some other stuff that I've made that YouTube thinks you might enjoy. I hope you enjoyed this one, guys. Enjoy the games, stay out of trouble, and I'll catch you on the next one.